Hey friends, Chris here with Little Roots Ranch and it is, uh, what, August 29th, I believe. And I wanted to get, no, August, <laughs> who's crazy? Uh, April <laughs> 29th. And um, I'm losing my mind because it's so warm and sunny outside. And so there's like a million things to do, but also I feel like it's too hot, but I've just been complaining that it's too cold. So, you know, never happy, I guess. But anyways, I wanted to show you I wanted to start a garden tour and of course starting inside makes sense and then most of my stuff because actually my bottom row is empty well I filled it with junk but I've moved all the plants out or most of the plants up here I have all of my pepper babies and I did top them that was my last video and you can see kind of I hope I don't know if it's coming through but you can see here there's like little little babies coming off and those will be stem two stems instead of a single leader. Um, and you can see that going on over here as well. Well, every plant, but so those are my peppers. And then down here I have my celery, which is really random because I should have moved that out by now as well. Um, the coloring is a little off because I made a mistake. This was switched the other way and I was just adding a little bit of water to the other side and I didn't quite realize that it wasn't like coming over and so <laughs> these things were so dried out and so I hope I didn't damage them beyond this one did okay obviously it's nice and green but I hope I didn't damage them and mess up future plantings so I guess we'll see um in the back here I have my eucalyptus and I've never grown eucalyptus before so I'm really excited I wonder does it smell like eucalyptus I can't tell my fingers smell like dirt uh, and then over here, I have my eggplants and a tomatillo. And so, <laughs> story time. Um, last year, I only had one tomatillo plant. I don't know. I, I have bad luck in germinating tomatillos, which is crazy because I think like tomatillos are like the easiest germinators on the face of the planet. But I have pretty good luck with everything else germinating. So I guess that's fair. And so I had one plant and I was like, whatever, you know, like I ended up filling my greenhouse too fast. And so I was like, I'll just put one in. And I had no exaggeration, 12 billion flowers uh, and they were starting to bulb up. And I was so excited because I thought I was going to be in salsa verde heaven. And they, the bags were filling up the paper outside, you know, I'm talking about, but the fruit inside was not. And I was like, what's going on? What's going on? And I don't know if I was just out of my mind, busy or what, but I was thinking about it and I was like, Christy, you, you only have one. What kind of cross pollination is that? And so I, that thing ended up taking up a space like four feet by six feet or maybe like six feet by eight feet. I don't know. It was humongous. Like, and it had, like I said, 10 trillion flowers, not one single fruit. So ironically enough, these last two five by five trays, because these are all five by five trays. The last two, I planted like, I don't know, eight tomatillos. And I kid you not, only one came through. And I was like, okay, well, that's annoying. And I'm not going to suffer like last year. So what I did is I had like 12 seeds that I was going to use for next year. And so I planted them in here. That's why this one's all big. I need to tear off these flowers because I don't want you flowering whatever, I'll do that later. Um, but you see back there, the little baby tomatillos. <laughs> and so that's because we're not having tomatillo gate again or whatever. Like I, I was so mad because I dedicated so much space to my greenhouse and I was just watching them grow and all of that. But anyway, so I'm going to take you back to the greenhouse and then show you the outside gardens. Just one moment. So in walking to the back, I realized that I wanted to update you on um, if you remember, <laughs> hi turkey boys, <laughs> if you remember in the fall, so this is what's known as chicken garden. I know it's not easy to tell, but this is an area that the chickens are on sometimes, but not always. See that fence right there? Mama's big boy turkeys are about to go through it. But you see there's a little hole right where that turkey's going through right now. And, <laughs> um, but so, and it's of course professionally held open by some baling twine because you know how that goes anywho so i don't know if you can see here but this is just chicken wire and it's only like three four feet um but for some reason the chickens don't escape so i'm very happy with that but here is what it looks like 
Last year I had grown tomatoes, potatoes, lettuce, um, lots of thistle and blackberries, <laughs> not intentionally. Um, and so come last fall, I let, uh, I opened the little hatch and so the poultry can come out here and obviously they've cleared this whole area. And so this is where my winter squash is going to go, um, which is so exciting. I will be seeding that soon, by the way. Um, over there, see the pile of chickens right there? And if you don't have chickens, it might look kind of weird if you do have chickens and you already know. So the way that chickens clean themselves is they take what's called dust baths. I also want to show you something else. So we're going to head over there. Anyways, they take what's called dust baths. And so what they do is they lay in the dirt and they like fluff their like wings around or whatever. And they uh, get a bunch of dirt in there and then they stand up and shake out. And that causes like any like dirt or what, like that's how they clean themselves. Hi boys. Who's mama's babies? Hey, what's going on with your tail, bud? <laughs> Anyways, so that's what they're doing. So if you don't have chickens, you might be thinking that it looks like something's wrong with them, um, but it's not. They're loving the warm, the warm soil and they're just rolling around in it. And you can see chicken sized holes and just about everywhere. But I'm gonna show you a turkey nest. So I think it's pretty exciting. So let's see here. You see right here, don't mind the hideous thistles, but this is a turkey nest. And so there's two eggs over here. I should actually grab those. These are what turkey eggs look like, by the way. And so it looks like she has two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine little turkey eggs there. And so the way that turkeys and chickens and well, everybody, hi boys. Oh, are you, are you all puffed up and looking beautiful? Are you looking beautiful? You want mama to touch you on camera? Okay. <laughs> the way that they do is they lay like one egg a day or every two days or whatever. And then once they get a number, usually nine to 12, but it varies is then what they do is they sit on them. And that sit is for the entire time. It's like 20, oh man, I don't remember. It's been a year, 20, 28 days, 20. Obviously, yes, this is a very, very secure fence. It just, I push it into the blackberries and then the blackberries hold it. So I guess that's convenient. Um, anyways, and so they, Henny May, she had baby turkeys last year. And so she'll sit on him until they hatch and then of course raise them. And so my job is to wait till she does that and then I locate her to a safe place. Because if I leave her out there, there might be some predators that might get to her. And unfortunately, a couple years ago, I lost some turkeys to a, a mountain lion. And so that was really sad. And so I don't wanna, I don't wanna repeat that. But anyways, welcome to my greenhouse. Um, it's warm today. Let's see, it's not so bad in here. We're like 79. Um, I've got the sides rolled up and the doors open, of course. Um, and so this is what my greenhouse looks like. Um, I'll be honest with you, I feel, I feel like really behind this year specifically. I think that I always feel a level of that every year. Um, but this year it feels a little more, but as I work, I think that like, it's okay. I think I always just do that. And I'm sure all gardeners do that. There's so many things to get done and it's like planting, transplanting, weeding, you know, life, you know, the first beautiful day you want to go to the river or something and sit by it cause it's too cold. Anywho. So these are my, tom I did, I did get my tomatoes out. Um, and that was within the last couple days. And so I have the greenhouse. I don't have uh, tomatoes out in the outside because the greenhouse heats up more during the day. And though the night inside temperature is about the same, the soil stays a little bit warmer. And so I felt comfortable with it. And so I went for it. Also, my tomatoes were just getting 
far too tall and really outgrowing their space. They grew like crazy this year. So here you can see some of the tomatoes. These ones weren't doing so well, so I have them planted a little closer. They're determinants as well, so they're a little bit of a smaller plant, whereas the ones in the front row are spaced a little more. And I did something interesting here. So as you can see, here and there, those are peas, uh, snow peas to be specific. This is carrots. Um, but you see back here is a tomato. So this is a cherry tomato. And so the reason, if you look down, you can see gaps in the peas. The reason for that, and then you see the tomatoes in those gaps, my plan is, because this year I'm really focusing on having spring and summer crops meshed together, as well as having summer and fall crops meshed together, and which is difficult. Um, and so I, the peas are were supposed to be the spring. I was late at getting things into the greenhouse because I was late cleaning up the greenhouse. Um, so they're not as far along as I thought they would be, but that's also okay. My CSA starts in June, and I think that it should be all right. Um, but these tomatoes here will climb up this trellis well, all, with assistance from me. And so that way I'll have pea, tomato, pea, tomato. And when the peas putter out is probably about when the tomatoes will start bringing on fruit. And so I'll cut those out. So that's kind of a plan that I have. I don't know exactly how it's going to work. I also this year have focused more on direct seeding, which I think is contributing to feeling more behind because things do start faster when they grow and, you know, like, inside or in protected culture or something like that but i got these seeds in i don't know if you can see i don't think anything's coming up there yet but i need to come through and thin but these look to be radishes um some turnips and just there's some carrots over there let's see here i think these are sprouting sprouting broccoli or maybe some daikon radishes I'm not sure I'd have to look at my thing. I know those bigger ones are turnips. And uh, yeah, I, <laughs> I've i started transplanting some of the lettuce here. That one's a growth from last year, so I just left it. But the little seed plugs were too wet, and so it was too much of a strain to pull out. So I'm leaving them, and I'll go back and try it tonight because that was like a day or two ago. Um, these are just some tomato plants for my neighbor. Uh, some strawberry starts over here. I've started lettuce and cucumber. So back here are my cucumber. This is a 72 tray. This is a 50 tray. It has 72 holes, 50 holes. And these are unagi cucumbers. And one thing about cucumbers, and I know everyone has different styles and stuff, but I love Asian cucumbers. I find that the slicers, I don't love the flavor as much and the skins are really thick. And I do love the European cucumbers, but I find that I love the flavor and the crispness, but I find that they don't have a long shelf life. And I find the Asian cucumbers are just right in the middle of like perfectness. And they're even great, at least in my experience for pickling. Um, and then, so I don't grow pickled to, uh, cucumbers, pickling cucumbers. And for me, it's just hard sometimes to manage so many different species and so if i can find one that checks a lot of boxes then that's really cool um here's one of the tomato trellises there's they're like all over through there uh i need to put them together let's see down here i've got this is my watering 10 20 tray and so with this one what i do is I put the little trays in there for like a minute. And so it bottom waters with them absorbing. But these are all tomatoes that I haven't planted out. Um, these are fava beans, arugula. I actually don't have anything in there. Fava beans, Swiss chard, more tomatoes, uh, leeks, lettuce. Um, back here I have, I let my sprinkler run a little too long, oopsie. I have all of my beautiful strawberries and you can see we're gonna jump Ooh. look at all of these flowers these strawberries are so productive it's wild um, but obviously these will all turn into strawberries I don't see any any forming yet I'm trying to look real quick but they all just started flowering usually around mid-may I start getting 
um, strawberries and that's always exciting because strawberries are amazing. I still have to clear out that back row, especially back there. Um, oh, there's a cabbage moth. If you guys have these moths in your uh, garden, I know they look like butterflies, they're not. They're absolute monsters. They lay those little green caterpillar things on any brassica, so like cabbage, broccoli, um, anything, and they chew holes and all that stuff. So they're pretty to look at, but they're monsters. Uh, oh, I was gonna show you. So these are the onions that I started in the greenhouse last fall. And I've also got some out of the greenhouse that look better and I'll show you those. Hi, turkey boy. Um, so they're still a little thinner. Some of them are thicker. The gold standard for transplant size is pencil thick, which obviously means the size of a pencil. So I need to transplant those out in the field. I got some random strawberries and Swiss chard. Lots of transition. I've got busy weekend or next two weeks ahead of me because I'm going to start my runner beans and I'm going to start my, um, what's it called? All my squashes, winter squashes, pumpkins, zucchinis, uh, corn, sunflower seeds. Basically, I feel like the end of April, early March is really a period of where like all the final seeding goes in right before everything just really pops out of the ground and starts growing and then you're eating from that. And it like right now is like a really big push besides the indoor push from earlier, but, and then kind of tapers off and then come June, July is when you'll seed, I'll seed whoever will seed, um, all of the seeds for the fall, winter, overwintering garden. And so it's kind of, it's the busy time right now for sure. Uh, here I have my sage plants, which I love the smell of sage. Oh, it smells so good. Um, but I also have 10 trillion <laughs> blades of grass and one dandelion. So that's fun. Um, <clears throat> so this is the pig garden. That's the, so we already went to the chicken garden and now we're in the pig garden. And so here, this is new. I don't know. It's hard to tell because the plants are really small. Um, but these were all planted uh, two weeks ago. Um, I built this, built this raised bed from alders that had fallen, um, on the farm and filled it obviously with compost. And so expanding the strawberry opera operation, I'm actually tripling down on strawberries because one, they're amazing and they grow really well. Uh, so here are all these yellow, yellow flowers and you can see, I think you can see there's not as many bees out anymore, but you can see that little bee right there. I like it when the bumblebees visit. But anyways, these were overwintered um, bok choys. And I let them go to seed just because I love seeing the yellow and the bees love it. And so it looks really pretty. Oh, is that a bumblebee? No, it's a honeybee. Okay. So over here, I still have this area tarped. I'm gonna pull this up and all of these rows will be even more strawberries because like I said, I'm tripling down on strawberries. Um, this row I had uncovered after it was tarped to kind of see how it's doing. I'm getting some grass growing in there. And so grass is one of the things I think that I've struggled with the most with coming through. A lot of the garden I had put cardboard down, but I started running out of cardboard. This was last spring when I was setting it up. So I was putting compost directly on it. And so I'm a little bit paying for it. <laughs> was struggling with the weeding, but it'll work itself out. I just have to put in the time. Um, let's see. So don't mind that beautiful, the grass looks really lush though. I can grow great grass, so that's cool. Um, so this, I don't know if you've ever seen, but this is what it looks like when a cabbage goes to flower. So this was a purple cabbage, you can see here. And all of these things, these are amazing, by the way. These are one of the reasons I leave cabbage is because these are just like little broccolinis or rob or whatever. They're so delicious and they look just like broccoli, but purple. And I like to eat them raw, but especially in a stir fry or whatever. Um, and so when they actually flower, they flower yellow, like that one right there. Um, 
but so I like having that because you know I eat the little little sprouts or whatever and then the bees eat from the flowers and then I cut them all out and the chickens finish them off so that's pretty nice in this row I don't know if you can necessarily see it but I've got four rows of carrots and they're just starting to pop just starting to come out I think you can kind of see it and over there in that next row is my garlic and this was garlic that was planted last fall um, I've also got here's some kale and some lettuce they're thinly planted because I plan to put a lot more seeds in here so I didn't want them to take up too much room um, ignore those thistles but here in the front well I guess can't see it if I block it but here in the front is the uh, spring planted garlic and then in the back back there are shallots and um, and so those are also spring planted so they'll be a little bit smaller and take a little bit longer but that's okay I'll also use them as baby garlic because that's delicious um, here so I was talking about the onion experiment and I showed you in the greenhouse the onions. Also, I'm sweaty, I apologize. I've been working outside all day. Um, but the onions that were overwintered in the greenhouse, well, these are the ones that were overwintered outside and I'll show you. And they look absolutely beautiful, if I'm being honest. I mean, all of these just look like little models um, and they're four different kinds, uh, but they look really, really good. Um, and uh and then i've got carrots down there look especially these ones i mean these are my purple ones obviously you can tell if you can see the purple but they just look really thick and healthy so i'm really happy now we just need to fingers crossed that it doesn't it doesn't go to seed um obviously i'll still eat them but then they're not saleable uh here i've got you can see my rhubarb patch that goes along here and then i've got some of my fruit trees here um oh over there i've got peas uh also the sugar peas um no 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 snow peas i really love snow peas and some lettuces and stuff like that i'll bring you over here so that's the pig garden now we're going over to the sheep garden and so this is the berry patch now <laughs> I'll admit the weeding has gotten away from me really bad. And this was last year. Um, in working on everything, the berry patch was kind of neglected because it just, you know, the, I was eating off of them and all the vegetables were getting sold. And so like those got all the weeding and transplanting and whatever. And so, but they're not doing too terribly bad. But I've got uh, raspberries in the first couple rows and a couple intentional blackberries lots of unintentional blackberries, but that's besides the point. Um, back there are blueberries, and then somewhere in here are cherry berries. I'll be honest, I'm not sure that they exist anymore. Um, and then also, sorry if it's like really bright and sunny, I was gonna film later on in the golden hour because it makes my farm and me look so pretty uh, with that light, warm amber glow. Um, but I forgot that it's my friend's birthday party tonight or like birthday dinner tonight. And so we're not filming tonight. <laughs> um, okay. So this one only has a couple rows here. I've got, uh, these are Asian greens. Um, I'm kind of struggling a little bit with like slug and stuff like that. And they're just popping up and I've got, these are all blackberries, but here you can see some bok choy and kind of as you go down. In this row, I can't remember if I had beets or carrots. I'm not seeing anything pop up though. So that's not, I don't know if that one's gonna be a crop failure. And then this final row, I've got spring planted garlic and um, my dahlias, which they're not popping up yet. Of course, it hasn't been warm enough. And I've got, I need to weed clearly. The thistles are the bane of my existence. But I guess that just happens, you know. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what my garden's looking like. The front garden area doesn't have anything special. A lot of stuff is overwintered or things I'm saving for seed. I'm going to um, 
what's it called? I'm going to do uh, raised beds and do flowers up there. The long term, let's get out of the sun a little bit. It's so bright. Um, also, I'm not used to sun, but so uh, uh, what's it called? Um, I'm gonna do some raised beds and long-term goals to have you pick flower garden for uh, my community. And so I think that'll be really fun, like a family event. So I've got like a blackberry poking my, <laughs> poking my foot. Anyway, so that, like I said, that's what I have going on. Um, I'd love to hear how your gardens are doing and what you're focusing on. Um, you can comment down below, of course. I know I like following. Uh, there's so many of you that I actually have memorized like every, like how your garden's doing and when you give me updates and stuff. So I appreciate that. Uh, like I said, between now and the beginning of May or even just after May, I'm gonna be working on, I already seeded cucumbers. I need to do all my squashes, pumpkins, winter squashes, summer squashes, um, corn, runner beans, everything. Get a lot of stuff transplanted out direct seated and get trellises up and all kinds of crazy stuff. So anyways, I hope that everything is going amazing in your garden. And if you've made it this far, I definitely appreciate you watching to the end. It like helps the algorithm or whatever and all that stuff. And you know, I just love the gardening community as a whole. Um, but anyways, thank you for watching. Happy gardening. Have a great day. Bye.